Okay, it's been a sweaty morning here, and I went out and cut the grass because it's too hot to cut it later in the day. So I've been working in the garden and sweating up a storm. I thought I'd come back here and do a quick screencast for you. If that's too much information, then just file it away. Um, get rid of it, delete it, do whatever you have to do to get that image out of your head. Um, there's a couple of links in here that I think are really worth looking at, and I'm going to start with something called Darwin Tunes. Uh, I'm going to let you listen a little bit to this, uh, an explanation of this. They could do a better job than I can. Feature the Darwin Tunes Evolutionary Music Experiment. Featured in the PNAS article entitled Evolution of Music by Public Choice. In Darwin Tunes, a population of short musical loops evolves as web-based listeners rate them on a scale of 1 to 5. The higher rated loops get to have sex and make baby loops, which form the next generation, which are rated, have sex, make babies, and so on. This sexual reproduction, combined with a low level of mutation, provides the variation required for Darwinian evolution. The experiment starts with loops where the notes and sounds are randomly assigned by the computer. The sounds are built purely from combinations of sinusoidal waveforms. They sound pretty awful, and these are some of the better examples. After 150 generations, which equates to 3,000 loops having been auditioned, there is a more steady rhythm, but the sound still has some rough edges. So it's it's a very interesting and, and there also it's um, this tool that it uses it's called SoundCloud and if you click on it here you can find you can add comments to the music so you can actually annotate music which is pretty cool um, uh, so um, you can play around with this it's a lot of fun all you have to do is click the participation link right here then click on here click here to participate and you can click right here to connect to the live audio and you open it with your iTunes and then you say whether you like it or not yeah, it's okay now remember this is just your own personal choice Gotta go back and see which one it is. It's loop number 97. You click that. I like the drum bass on this, so I'm gonna click I like it. And loop number 96. Usually that top loop. And that's how you do it. Just a little note here. You can also save it as a loop. Just right click, save link as, and you can save it as an MP3. And I'm saving all mine into music, so there it is. So I was thinking maybe I could use these loops in my podcasts, or just generally when you need kind of open source, no pay loops and it's all free and that's Darwin tunes and it's a, it's a lot of fun your kids might really like it a lot just for fun they've got a, a brand new evolving music uh, at Darwin tune for drums and percussion and that's what we're listening to in the background that's what we'll listen to for the rest of the screencast it sits in the background. You can raise the level up. And you can bring it back down. The next thing I'd like you to look at is apps for kids. And this is the public culture website called Boing Boing. And this is their section called Apps for Kids. And it's, it's always good. Um, 
if you want to play games with your kids on the on, on iPod or I, iPhone or iPad, this is a great place. Uh, I downloaded Crazy Squirrel here. And it was so much fun, I decided to go ahead and pay for the app. And I've already downloaded it, it cost a bug. I figured it was worth it. So I'm at um, Crazy Squirrel right now. And I'm going to, they have some pre recorded uh, sounds in here. So I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to play the trumpet. Now what you do is you press that, and then you move it around, and it keeps looping over and over again. Then you can also record your own voice. Hi, I'm a crazy squirrel. And you play that. It's kind of fun, and I think your kids would fall down giggling uh, just playing with this game. It's a good one. Last, there's a couple of uh, game sites here. There's one called the Five Minute Film Festival, talking about game based learning. And there's one down here called Jognog, and you might give either one of these a try. Um, it's a blast. And if you're looking for a way to, um, to get your principal or whoever you answer to at your building to sign on to social networking tools, you might click on this from this year's ISTE conference. These are all videos of, from students who are using Twitter, YouTube, and Digo in the classroom. Here's a student who... And this year, Roseanne showed us a website called Digo. And I thought it was a very helpful study tool because it allowed you to highlight things online. And because I love highlighting and I tend to lose papers when I print them out. And um, I ended up using it for not only all my school subjects, but some research I was doing for things outside of school. So not only was I able to look at my bookmarks from anywhere I wanted, but you're also able to share them with other people or groups of people. And so that was really helpful for things like our individual science projects. Um, so we can see what other people are working on and we were able to find really helpful links from other people's pages. Okay, I don't know about you, but anytime I see uh, real life stuff, it's great. And real life kids talking about real life stuff. This year in science class, we used a lot of different types of social media. The one thing that I used most was Twitter. I used Twitter to connect with a bunch of different people, especially one music therapist who really helped my independent science project. I sent her a tweet and she replied back and then I asked her a bunch of questions and she answered them all with really long, in-depth answers and that was really helpful for me. I learned a lot from her and I couldn't have connected with her in any other way. So Twitter really helped my science project. Twitter helped me a lot um, for science because, well, my teacher, Roseanne, she made a Twitter account for the whole class, and um, we got to use it for our, our ISP project, and that's what helped me the most, because um, I did air pollution for China, and I needed to get information from China um, for the uh, their air quality, and I also got information from, um, from New York City, too, on Twitter, so then I found a Twitter account for both of um, here and in China, and I found one in Beijing, because they uploaded um, the air quality number every hour, and every day I would um, use the data for the same um, time. Brilliant, huh? I think this is just great what they do here, uh, what they're doing here. So um, I'll let you discover some of your some of this stuff for yourself. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope you uh, get around to watching these. Thanks a lot.